Okay, Math 150 students, what we're going to do this week, uh, our kind of our first official week of our college algebra material, uh, might still feel like review for many of you, but um, it's a good foundation of solving equations. So um, many of the equations that we're going to solve uh, will show up uh, many times throughout the semester, and so let's make sure we have a good foundation of that and review that whole concept of solving equations. So um, in 1.2, uh, let's begin our conversation with uh, um, talking, first of all, about what it actually means to solve an equation, uh, because it's often misunderstood, um, you know, what that is, and, and there's actually a lot of good math behind it. Um, when we're asked to solve an equation, we're basically asked to do three things. Number one, we have to find, oops, find a value for the variable. And uh, there might be more than one variable. So that's the first thing. Uh, we got to find a value for variable. Um, so there's the beginning. And then the second thing is, is we sub into the equation. And then what we get is we get a true statement. Um, a lot of math is built on that basic idea. So it starts by finding a value, and then we sub it in and get a true statement. This actually results in a way to actually check to see if we have what uh, what I have in terms of a value that's actually true. Okay, and uh, again, like as I mentioned, a lot of good math, uh, the, the reason a graph is the way a graph is, stems from that basic characteristic that we're, to solve an equation, we're being asked to find a value, all right, that when I sub it in, gives us a true statement, okay? Um, in terms of solving it, right, the process, um, what we follow is commonly known, or I playfully call the golden rule, and that is basically do the same thing to both sides. So if you add something to both, uh, add something to one side, you add it to the other. If you subtract something from one side, you subtract it from the other. If you decide to multiply something to one side, you have to do it to the other. This basically keeps us in balance, which by the way, is what algebra means. It's all about keeping things in balance. So you can imagine if we're on a teeter-totter, right? And if we imagine the teeter-totter is the equation, and I got something over here and something over here, if I want to keep that teeter-totter in balance, if I decide to add five over there, then the, you know, so that the balance wasn't tipped, I have to add five over there. Or if I decide to multiply this side by two, I got to multiply that side by two. So that basically keeps our our seesaw, our equation, in balance, and that's actually the heart and soul of algebra right there. So I call it the golden rule, um, and it applies to anything: square roots, absolute values. Um, applying a function value, it doesn't matter. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do the exact same thing to the other. Okay? And then it turns out that what process we use, right, like what kind of decisions we make, what are we going to do to both sides, um, other processes that come, kind of come in is uh, kind of determined by the type of equation we have. Uh, perhaps you guys have uh, uh, solved enough equations in your past you know, do I use the quadratic formula? Uh, can I just, you know, how do I solve a linear equation versus a rational equation? Um, you know, do I use factoring? Uh, there's a lot of tools that we pull out of our toolbox, all right, uh, and that depends on, well, what type of equation are we looking at? And so in this section, 1.2, we're just going to consider two types of equations. One is a linear equation and the other type is a rational equation. And basically you know you're looking at one or the other. If you recall a linear equation, well a line, if we were to graph it, has something of the form y equals mx plus b. And the takeaway is notice that the variable that we have for x, right, is to the first power. All right, that's the first thing, and it's up in a numerator. So if I had to write this, this would be over 1. Or in essence, it's there's some form y equals mx plus b in there. Okay, So that's how we know we're looking at a linear equation. A rational equation, as we saw in our review, is basically a situation where we have a polynomial divided by a polynomial. In essence, the variable, all right, 
will probably be in the denominator somewhere. Um, and then we have a poly divided by a poly. And so those are classic ways to kind of look and see, are we dealing with the linear equation? And then once I decide which one I have, we know what type of procedure, you know, what am I going to be doing to both sides to get things going. All right, and so uh, hopefully that's good. Uh, I like to call that groundwork uh, for what's ahead. So uh, let's practice this last skill. Uh, right here, what I have are six equations, and let's figure out which ones are linear and which ones are rational. All right, and again, we're just going to kind of go back to our definition. So letter A, um, this is very clearly a linear equation. Uh, first of all, if you just look at one side, right, that basically fits your mx plus b. And even the other side, it's kind of miswritten around, but it's uh, mx plus b. Or if you take a look at your variable, it's up in the numerator, and it's to the first power. Right here's x. In a, you know, technically this is over one, and over one. So x is up in the numerator, and it's to the first power. X is in the numerator. It's the first power, or it basically fits the form y equals mx plus b. Okay. Uh, letter b. If we take a look at this, notice that the variable is down in the denominator. So I essentially have a poly over a poly, right? Have it a couple of times. So this fits the description of a rational equation. All right, so uh, that's what we have on that one. Um, looking at letter C, um, what I do see are fractions. So you might want to call this a rational right equation, which you probably could, right? But technically, the more correct answer here is it is in fact linear uh, because if, again uh, it just happens to be that the coefficients are fractions if you take a look at your variable right we have mx plus b mx plus b so on both sides we have the life's linear y equals mx plus b form so it's technically a line that the coefficients happen to be very uh, excuse me fractions um, but you know, so, but you can kind of treat this as both. But uh, in that effect, it's a linear equation. Um, also, notice that the num the x is up in a numerator and it's to a first power. So technically speaking, that is a linear equation. Although you could get away with calling it a rational one. Uh, letter D. Uh, again, I see a fraction here, so I technically have a binomial divided by a monomial. So you could possibly call that a rational, but in reality, this is also technically linear. If we were to graph this, we get a line. Uh, on this side, we have mx plus b, and on this side, it's kind of a train wreck, but there's two fractions there, right? 2x plus 1 over 3 breaks down, it breaks down into 2x over 3 plus 1 over 3. So I essentially have, right, there's my m, there's my x, and there's my b. We're thinking right here, right, there's my variable, it's up in a numerator to the first power. There's my variable to the first power. So technically speaking, that's linear, but you could get away calling it a rational because I do see, I do see the idea that I have a poly over a poly. But it's, I think, uh, uh, it is linear. It would be the correct answer there. All right, and then a couple more. Uh, what we have here is clearly we have a variable down in the denominator. So we have a poly divided by a poly. So this would definitely be a rational expression, all right, or a rational equation. Because uh, again, I have a poly over poly variable is sitting down in the denominator. It's kind of a get, bit, uh, big giveaway. And then last but not least, we have again, we have a, uh, a, a technically a monomial divided by a bi, all right? And so we have a poly over a poly, a poly over a poly, a poly over a poly. The variable is down in the denominator. So this one would be rational. All right, so there's your first categorizations. Uh, as we move through more sections, we'll see some more categories, some more types, which tells us which process we're going to use. We're always going to use the golden rule. Whatever you do on one side, we do the other, right? And the whole idea is we have to find a value that when I plug it in, makes the situation true. So now that we've done some groundwork and some identification, in the next video, we'll actually talk and put this in 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 uh, uh, in, in, in in the process, right? We'll actually solve some equations and find those values that when I sub them in, make it true. So I'll see you guys in the next video.